uh, just to give you an update of where we're at with membership in uh, the district, right now, the last report I had, we were sitting at 1502. And it's been noted that America has has lost the most members. And so the push for Grow Rotary is there. And uh, that's why we're, we're trying to do our best. In the membership leads, I hope you'll understand, there were three leads that had come through. Our uh, individual is Sally Blanchard. Of the two that she had referred, one club had responded, the second club did not and it's still out there. So I didn't look to see which club it is. You will know because you would receive the notice. So if, if you can help us in that, I sure would appreciate. Another positive note, we got another uh, inquiry. Uh, one of the inquiries was through our TV ad. So that's working. So I, I'm happy about that, gang. So that's being real fruitful there. Just to let you know, each island has a membership resource individual. If you need help, reach out to them, or you can just find me. Everybody knows where I, I is, and you can just email me, and I'll be happy to direct you and all of that. So I kind of want to go over what we've got on the new clubs. Uh, PDG Wynn Shoneman is the district advocate and new club development chair. And currently, we have on the big island, Connie Ichinoso from the Rotary Club of Pedal and Nesta Domingo from Kona Sunrise, who have put together a plan uh, to have uh, an e-flex club on the island of Hawaii. And the club name will be Rotary Club of Malka to Makai. And let's see, and they are starting out with those who have left Rotary and moving forward. Uh, there are, they are creating a flyer invitation for their first informational meeting. Their goal for the charter date is February 1st or the 23rd Rotary's birthday as, as was shared. As you know, it's a moving target. So at least they have a, a point to uh, reach. Uh, you can assist them by recommending anyone you know on the island looking to join Rotary. And I know you are trying to fill the clubs that, that you take care of, but just an event, if they happen to be at, pa, pa, uh, let's see, Na'alehu or Ka'u or, or uh, where I get my Donna's cookies or used to get my Donna's cookies. Those of you who know the Big Island know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, that would be a nice match, Kohala, you know, hobby and all of that. So uh, the other thing is uh, we're all excited about this. And I'm excited because it's their plan. And I'm just there to give them a hand. On Maui, I think um, uh, Wendy Hornack and Kwanzaa is working on a new e-club focusing on business owners. Um, this is her passion and has set a goal for herself of bringing in two members per month. So for me, I say, you go, girl. Please join us this coming Saturday, 10 a.m. for our fall seminar membership webinar, where she will be giving an overview of attracting members during this COVID period. Additionally, uh, Naomi just mentioned about uh, Valley Isle. Uh, and the group there, the resource group, Mariko and, and Joanne there, they're working on that. So it's, it's in good hands. Uh, they're also working to start an interact club on Lanai and Molokai due to the strong relationship with Joanne Laird's Read Aloud program. So Kauai, okay. Our island rep there is David Lister, as Ted knows. And he's trying to work with the West Kauai Club, Ted, uh, and focusing on the gov government workers out at Bank uh, Barking Sands. Where did you go? Okay, there you are, with Barking Sands. And Ted, I haven't forgotten you. And the, the entrepreneur group, that is still there. I, I'm not giving up, and, and I told Gwen, 
no, I want to go back to that Hanalei club and, and get that started because, and this seminar, his topic is going to be value proposition. Do you understand that one, Ted? I know you do. That was a big question. So hopefully that will get answered. Okay, that's Kauai. Oahu. Okay, Jeff Harvath from the Wahiwa Wailua Club is working with Wynn Shoneman to start a club on North Shore. He's hitting a stone wall and having some issues, but that's okay. We believe in resistance and the feeling of taking members away from other clubs, which seems to be the perception that I am getting from other clubs. And um, I would like to try and dispel because there's room for, for everybody. There's room for everybody. Additionally, partnering with other organizations is the process and assistance I'm hoping to get with AG Dick May. Dick, I have not forgotten you either. So, and a group he is involved with. So I'm, I'm excited about that. Don't want to overload you, but didn't want you to forget. I remember. Also, PDG Win Shoneman is discussing the possibility of starting a club with whole Ho'ola Napua Business Partners, which is the human trafficking sanctuary out at North Shore. It's good to see you, Mark. I understand the two of you went out there together. There are other spots that Naomi is working with on the Windward side and others, I'm sure, hoping to assist with Laia, BYU, and up to Turtle Bay. That's all that I have. Thank you, everyone. And I hope I said it within five minutes. Naomi, oh, can I, Nick, for I see thing? your finger. Yeah, let me have for well, it's supposed to be my whole hand, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, because you mentioned my name. Basically, what we're about is just trying to figure out who we know on that unserviced and underserviced part of the island, which basically lies from Haleiwa to Sunset Beach, Laie. Um, none of these folks are going to wind up in my AG area. That's not important. The important thing is, if we can find some folks we know and they will come together to form a new club, it's probably going to be in Wes's area, I suppose, but wherever it winds up, it's just the idea of trying to spread our reach and to find some good people who aren't uh, a part of any Rotary today. Sure. Okay, thank you so much, gang, and take care, good luck, and talk to you soon. Any questions for Nalani? Uh, Nalani, you. You know, Nalani, you said that I was working with somebody on, on the uh, Kahuku side. Remember you, on, on you remember you mentioned that you had talked to some of the Windward Clubs, hoping to get some assistance moving down with the Interact and all that. That's all. That's all. Interact and um, the BYU. The BYU. That's yeah. correct. For, that's for me, but no, I'm not working on that. Okay, so for um, um, Janet is not here, but uh, Janet is working on this really big project with vocational service. So, Bob, how, what are you doing for vocational service? Hello, everybody. I hope the glare is not too bad on you guys. So, <laughs> here to shed a little more light. Um, anyways, yeah, vocational service. We had a really good meeting a few weeks ago with, uh, with most of the vocational chairs from the other clubs. Uh, very good input and... Um, we uh, talked mostly about our uh, how we're trying to promote the clubs of using a uh, what we call a vocational two-minute talk at your club. And my vice uh, or co-chair person with me, who is Robert Jackson, he uh, showed an example of, of what we do. We did a real nice job with that. So uh, then, as a result of all that. Um, you know, I got to give Naomi the credit on this. She said, you know, why don't we do this on Zoom monthly or, or you know, on a regular basis and do what we call a, we're going to call it Rotary Doing Business Rotary Marketplace. So we're going to roll it out starting next month. It'll, uh, the first one will be October 6th. It's a Tuesday and we're going to try to uh, keep this going the first Tuesday of every month. It'll be in the evening from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. And we're going to allow Rotarians to do a free two to three minute commercial right on Zoom about their businesses. And 
the whole idea for this is to try to promote business amongst Rotarians, you know, try to get people to you know, do business with each other, trying to help the struggling businesses, of course, uh, with this COVID going on. So we're trying to do that. And so we're pretty excited about it. Uh, gotten a, uh, some good response already from some people. So Janet is um, working on sending out the e-blast. That should go out today or tomorrow at the latest. Mm -hmm. It's going to go to every Rotarian in the district. And, and I'll be uh, putting together the list of people that'll uh, get this thing rolling, get, get it started. So we're looking at featuring about 12 businesses per meeting, give them two to three minutes each, and then, then that'll allow us a little time for just open discussion as well. Um, so along with that, uh, I did get a good response from, um, from a guy named Gabriel, who's the vocational chair at the uh, Honolulu Sunset Club. And he is putting together a resource list of uh, rotary professionals that are able to specifically deal with COVID issues and COVID struggles amongst Rotarians and people that might be struggling with their businesses or, or other things like rent issues, business rent, things like that. And he's gonna uh, put together a um, resource list of professionals that we can rely on uh, Rotarians doing business with other Rotarians. So, so I think that's a great idea. And he's going to uh, come on at, to the, on this first meeting that we're going to have the first Tuesday in October. So uh, along with that too, uh, we hope, I'm not sure we'll do it on this first meeting, but uh, Robert's idea is to bring in a, a guest speaker, uh, like a vocational guest speaker that uh, might be able to, you know, present good information to uh, businesses, rot Rotarians that have businesses or anybody that could utilize this service. But one example that he, he gave was um, he had seen a, uh, um, a person that gave a presentation on how to use social media for uh, advertising. And I think he, uh, this particular person was mostly talking about Facebook, using that as a, as a vehicle for advertising. So we're going to try to get you know professionals that will come in and give us some insight on how to how to be better in our businesses and things like that. So pretty much it for me. Okay, uh, the guru on uh, Facebook is is Ted too. To Ted might be a good resource. Okay, good, great, perfect. Yeah, Robert sent me an email that I still need to reply to. <laughs> okay, great. He must have been the you must be the guy he was talking about then. I could be the guy. He's okay, the guy. Perfect. You're well, the guy. The guy. <laughs> perfect. Well, perfect. We got, we got some other guys and gals through this. <laughs> <laughs> but some of the other things that Janet's doing on the website, she uh, revamped the Rotary in Hawaii website, uh, updated it. Um, I, I think it's all updated now. Um, but you know, a lot of information on the, the Rotary D5000 website. And if you have things to put on there, please let us know so we can update it. The Rotary in Hawaii business directory um, is, is about 150 listings right now. There's an open period where she can um, take more listings. So please ask your presidents to get the word out. If we have members who want to be listed on the directory, they can do it right now. She can't um, do it you know, randomly. It's gotta be where we have like an open period to add on things. So now's the time until the 22nd. Okay, thanks Bob, good job. Uh, youth service, Brian, are you there, Brian? I'm here. Okay, go ahead. Uh, can, you, can you see me? All right. Um, sorry, I'm looking at my computer on another monitor. But um, so we had a committee meeting um, last week. Uh, some really exciting things happening for us. Uh, on first, I guess I was on October third. Zone twenty six and twenty seven is doing a uh, virtual Rotary Youth Service Conference, and so the invite went out to all um, club youth service chairs to sign up. It's a virtual conference uh, being put on by the zone. So um, multiple districts are involved. Um, it's focused in a lot on road direct and uh, interact. And so uh, I think that's uh, an opportunity for our, our 
district to get some training from um, um, resources outside of uh, just us. And so uh, hopefully folks have been signed up for that. Um, in addition, uh, for our uh, Rotaract clubs, I know uh, Arjun is starting to get them going and, and voting in some of a council together. So we're working on that. Uh, for our Interact clubs, a lot of them are kind of dormant right now. They, uh, the, the DOE isn't really laying them do too much. So we'll see uh, what uh, youth service projects we get out of them for this fall. But the first thing that we are gonna be doing is on October 10th, and this hasn't been broadcast yet, but on October 10th, um, Gary uh, Picaro is having, uh, put me in contact with uh, an associate uh, admissions director from Pacific University. And she is gonna be putting on a common application tips and tricks presentation, as well as kind of a college prep presentation for uh, the youth in the state. And it's not gonna be just reserved for our Interact Club, it's gonna be open to anyone. And um, in, in that uh, seminar, uh, obviously I'll be there and we'll be uh, kind of promoting and plugging the Interact Clubs and uh, trying to get folks to join. But I think this will be kind of our first contact with many of our uh, Interact Clubs around the state and uh, we'll see which ones uh, can get involved. But I'm kind of relying on all the club presidents and everyone here to help spread the word once I get the flyer out sometime this weekend or early next week. Uh, it'll be a, a very uh, exciting opportunity to get everyone together because uh, uh, this person who's doing the presentation, she's an admissions director for Pacific University and has been doing these um, uh, seminars for uh, students nationwide who are interested in Pacific University. And she says she gets about 60 a week um, on Sunday. So um, I'm hoping that uh, uh, we can fill that up with you know a good, amount of interactors as well as just anyone from the DOE or any of any uh, private schools who are interested and in, uh, get them hopefully interested in interact at the same time. So we're working on that. Um, let's see what else. Uh, you know, I think we bounced off some ideas on uh, um, just projects to be done um, this fall for our youth and uh, we're trying to get them involved in the tree planting project that's happening for Rotary Gives Thanks. Um, we're also uh, trying to do some donation drives where you can drive up and, and donate um, items for things. And, and so I think our, a lot of our internet clubs hopefully might get involved in some of those things. Uh, and then um, maybe just to report on some other uh, things going on is RILA is happening in hopefully in February, Tim Hansen is taking that on. Uh, it looks like each island is going to go virtual this year. So just plan on that. It's going to be a virtual RILA. And uh, that's kind of our initial plans for now. And then uh, as this first kind of October seminar with all of our interactors and prospective interactors gets going, we're going to try to just uh, make sure we're reaching out to them monthly um, with other kind of value added seminars where we talk about different things about college prep or interviewing or essays, things we can do virtually for them uh, uh, while uh, they can't do projects in person, but uh, at least to keep the interest and activity up of our interact clubs. And so I'm really looking forward to, to uh, this kind of monthly workshop uh, program that we have. And so we'll be setting a, maybe a schedule for that and a, and a listing of what topics will be covered to all the youth service chairs. And then I, I think basically we're trying to kind of gather all that effort and culminate that into a 2021 Interact District Conference. Uh, and so we'll see how uh, the planning goes for that. But again, it'll be some sort of hopefully combination virtual in-person event um, sometime around our own district conference. And so that's uh, what we're doing. Um, Last things would just be like, make sure whoever's working with youth this year gets their background checks if they haven't gotten them. <laughs> so uh, that's always important. Um, we don't like to talk about it, but it's important. So uh, yeah, that's about it for me, Naomi. That's a lot. Any questions for Ryan? Ryan, I missed when you said the Zone Virtual Conference was gonna be held. Sorry. Yep, sorry, that's on October 3rd. Um, it's 
Uh, zone 2627, I think, is doing a, um, it's a, basically a three track conference. So you can sign up for, um, you have a choice of three different courses at each hour, basically top of the hour. And uh, uh, just note that it's on Pacific time. So if you're planning on attending the first session at six in the morning, uh, I'll be there. Uh, but uh, it, uh, it'll be early for me. <laughs> so. Uh, but yeah, it, that went out to all the youth service chairs. It's free. So, um, you know, I, if you're interested, please uh, sign up. The space is limited. So, Ryan, you're doing good work. Um, one thing that I'm going to be looking for, um, I know in at least one of our clubs, we've had a little bit of gentle pushback from one of the schools. We have interactors who are interested in collaborating with us and we will work with them on all of the things that they can do. We lost the, uh, basically the counselor who had been working with Interact and the school has more or less said, while we're distance learning and while we sort this out, we're not really ready to step in in a big way. So without trampling on any toes, we're interested in how we can keep all of those links going so that we can bring our interactors in and support them fully. So any any good ideas you've got for that, we'll be looking forward to. Sure, um, I, you know, I hear you. It's not, you know, even Roosevelt, um, which is my, my club I sponsor, told me that they can meet virtually, but they can't do any projects right now, which is unfortunate. Um, just the DOE is not very interested right now in these things. Uh, we're, you know, Naomi and I will kind of, we have kind of a tiered approaches to how we're going to approach the DOE to get maybe some more advisors active. Um, and that, you know, might be working with the principals, might be working with the superintendents, might be even working with some folks on the board of education. Um, so we're working on that. And then, you know, the, I think the last resort for me, but is, is a possibility is that we go with a community interact based club and we form those relationships and keep those relationships. Uh, it, it's a little bit of a conflict of interest some, to some degree because I don't know where we would meet. And I guess if it's virtual, we could all, it doesn't really matter where we meet, but if they all meet on school campus, then we can't do a community interact club. So, but there is the opportunity if, you know, worst case scenario to do like an, a community interact club with Kaiser and then, or whatever club it is, and and then uh, see if we can at least keep relationships directly between a Rotarian advisor and the students. And that would be one well, way. hopefully the situation's ephemeral and we'll get beyond COVID. But uh, yeah, we can still yeah. we they can still be a supported organization even if they're not strictly aligned with the schools for a short period. I think so. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So Ryan. Anyway. This is Wes from Pro Ridge. Hey. We're, going to be, we're going to be using your, student, your, your, your college prep seminar as a segue for the creation of what we're calling the Oahu Interact Club, sponsored by the Pro Ridge Club. And this will be the first attempt for a community Interact Club. And we've been inviting Wayward Interact members from all of the schools that are dormant right now to join us to at least keep the Rotary um, ideals in place and also be belong to something and in the event that the schools start welcoming these students back you know they can float in and out of the different organizations so um, Eric Fujimoto from our club has been a strong proponent of this um, we've met with the Milani club they're not sure what they're going to be doing also but um, we're going to be using your October seminar as a jumping point for us and We'll be inviting community kids in an attempt to try to build something out in our Leeward area. So, yeah, um, that's, a, that's a good idea. Um, and maybe you and I can touch base separately from this meeting because um, I just want to be on the same page on that October 10th date. And, and Naomi, I don't know what you think about this, but maybe at least while COVID is happening and we don't have DOE support, can we do an Oahu and, and other, other islands too, can we do a, an Oahu East, an Oahu Central, and an Oahu West community-based Interact Club and just kind of absorb our school's Interact members for now? <laughs> can try. You can try. West yeah. has been trying to work with the schools and, and he's really having a hard time. That's why you know this idea of a community-based uh, came up. And yeah. um, on the Big Island as well, Benson is thinking of a community based on 
on the Hilo side. I, I would, so, I, that would make sense. And if we could, you know, if they could f kind of float like, um, you know, like uh, Richard was saying about, you know, if they need to go back into the school's interact club at some point when COVID uh, dissipates, then hopefully we, we could do that. I think that actually, that might be a good way. Yeah. So yeah, Wes, why don't we talk about it? Um, Great. Yeah. Yeah, this is messing up my personal timetable. So I need to get moving on this before it slips away. Yeah, because even my Roosevelt kids, they, they can't do anything right now either. So it's kind of hard. On Maui, uh, there's a guy, um, uh, what's his name, Dylan, who is uh, working with Hana and uh, Lanai for Interact, and Hana and uh, Lanai. So lots of yeah. um, rejuvenation in, in the youth service area. So thank you very much, Ryan, for all your hard work. Yeah, exciting. Yep, it is. It's a big job, but you know, it's, we're getting there. And so hopefully we can, at the end of this year, um, make that connection with the officers so that over the summer we can do maybe training and, and really help the, um, the Interact and Rotaract clubs be more self-sustaining so that they know how to operate without their, their advisor. But uh, good job. Yep, we're okay, working so on thank you. Any, any more questions for Ryan? Uh, okay, so let's see, for community service, the tree planting projects are uh, still ongoing. They're coming up with, I think their plan C is now the plan A, uh, because they're not going to be able to probably get together in big groups. Um, so it, for the tree planting on the North Shore, it's going to be over a lot of uh, weekends in smaller groups, but it still will happen. Um, and so each island uh, still has their um, project going. So Mariko, on your side, you, you're doing the tree planting on Maui, yeah? Uh, yes, uh, we are working with Uncle George Kahumoku and uh, we still have to um, confirm with him uh, several points. But what we are trying to do is three different areas and one on west side, one on up, up country and one on south Maui. And we will be planting fruit, trees at farms so that will involve the uh, the farm farmers you know, that uncle george is the mentor of and uh we're still working out the details okay um so you know the did you guys have a chance to see the newsletter that just went out uh not yet okay. Okay, so on the newsletter, I listed out some of the projects that the clubs are making are, are doing right now. And so those are the projects that just happened from like uh, July 1st. So all of the presidents were asked to send that in. So please remind them if they have projects and they want to be listed in the um, newsletter to please send that to me. Because I tell you, people really like reading about these projects all around the state. And it really makes you feel proud that you're part of this uh, of Rotary to do all of these projects. So um, please remind them to, to send those um, the stories in. Okay, for foundation, there's a lot going and I'm sorry. Uh, hey Beth, can you text uh, Laura? Um, for foundation, she has um, some webinars coming in for training on the foundation. She did have one with the foundation chairs the other night. Uh, we had 35 on the, on the Zoom. But um, with the um, Polio Plus um, program that we're having on the 24th, um, Sonia, we're going to have entertainment on that, um, that Zoom from 10 to 11.30 on the 24th? Uh, yes, Marianne did the minute by minute. And it looks like with all that's going on, we're going to have three slots of entertainment and then one last slot where everybody will sing Hawaii Aloha. <laughs> how? how? <laughs> you know, it's really hard to do it on Zoom, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll do our best, <laughs> you know. Okay, um, so there's going to be speakers, they're going to honor um, the, the hospitals, um, so a lot of uh, really good information. Um, we're trying to do, to do press releases for that day. We want to do fundraisings, but there will be a silent auction. So we're doing, you guys know we're going to try and do that uh, district-wide silent auction, right? A lot of the clubs are saying they don't have, um, they didn't have a, a way to fundraise for their projects and they're short of money. So we thought we'd do this, um, the district-wide uh, silent auction. It, we're going to use, Mariko, the 32 auction platform. 
Um, and so clubs who want to participate would um, send, we're going to let them know how to post their items. And if their items sell, they're responsible for mailing it out, but all of the proceeds would go to them. If they want to give a per percentage to Polio Plus, they can. If they want to, the clubs want to give items to Polio, the Polio uh, Committee to sell for a sign auction, you can do that too. But um, uh, we're working that out. We're having an information session on the 24th for anybody who's interested. So you can let your clubs know if they, if they want to participate with the silent auction, uh, we're going to have that in um, October. Okay. Um, so we have um, October for Polio Plus, the awareness. Um, they're also looking at how to fundraise for Polio Plus. And so there's this new thing called raise.rotary.org. If you've ever participated in one of those walkathon things and you go online and you make donations and you form teams, that's how that works. Raise.rotary.org. And we're, we have one under District 5000. So when, you, when we'll give you the URL, but it's like raise.rotary.org slash district dash 5000 dash challenge. And when you go in that um, site, it's our team is for the district and you can form a team of your own under the district and raise money. So all you do is you send the link out and people can um, donate money through that link and that money goes straight to the foundation. So I did a hundred dollars on that link and in three days I got my receipt back from Rotary Foundation. So, you know, we don't have to uh, deal with the paperwork and sending in that money. It's so easy and so much fun. So, so, uh, okay, so stay tuned for more uh, information on that. We're going to send that out so people can send their, uh, to join that um, team for the district and form your own club teams or individual teams. You send the link out on Facebook and get your friends and families to also donate to your team. So trying to raise more for, um, for polio. So a lot of things coming up for polio, um, World Polio Day on, on Saturday. So we're lucky it's on Saturday this year. Um, and then on, uh, in, in November is Foundation Month. So uh, Laura has a, a lot going with um, training the foundation chairs on um, you know, what they can talk about in their clubs to uh, bring awareness about what the foundation does and um, getting some donations for the foundation. So she is available, her team is available to speak at the clubs uh, about the foundation if you, if you need help. Um, so, Laura, you have anything else on foundation? We talked about uh, the Polio Plus and the event and foundation month. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I, I uh, can't get my uh, can't get my setting up so that uh, you can hear me. Hang on one second here. I was getting ready to join another Zoom meeting. I'm so sorry. Okay. We hear you just fine. What is Laura. it you wanted me to talk about? Sorry. Um, is is there anything more? We talked about Polio Plus, the fundraising, the silent auction, uh, the training, uh, oh, the webinars we have coming up for foundation. We have Foundation Basics on the 26th of September, and that one is open to all Rotarians and non-Rotarians. And and Laura and her team is going to talk about the big picture of why. Um, the foundation is important and what they what they do and it's kind of what Rotary is all about because that's where we get our money from um, the, for the grants is through the foundation. And by the way, uh, we still are missing, we're missing a lot of clubs that have not sent in their copy of their bank statement. So if you could please, please talk to your presidents about sending that bank statement copy into um, grants at Rotary D5000 because once we get that and we know what their grant money deposited to that account or mailed, then they can get their checks. But the checks are ready, you guys. It's they're ready. So we were we were so statements. excited that we had them early, you know. So Dave real and they're all signed and ready to go. Dave just wants to get rid of them. So we're happy to deposit them into bank accounts. Yep. Okay, so please um, when you talk to your presidents about that Ask them to please make a big deal about getting this money, that this is money that they, they, their own members gave three years ago, and they're getting it back for their projects. 
Uh, so if you can please help us make a big deal so people know that it's their money coming back and, and all of the great projects that um, the clubs are doing with that money. Okay, any questions for Laura? <laughs> Sorry. You did a great job, Naomi, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> See, you didn't need me at all. <laughs> Okay, uh, so then moving on, let's see. Um, so for your presidents, please remind them about getting that um, grant statement to the website so that they can get their um, money, making a big deal about it. Um, talk about membership, it should be top of mind. So um, John Huco the other day was talking about how in the United States, and Nalani said that you know the United States uh, membership has really dropped a lot, but John Huco said we have a membership crisis right now in the United States. And so please um, talk to your presidents about what kind of resources they need, if they want somebody to speak, if they, their membership chair and committees need help, uh, Nalani's, uh, a group, her uh, team members can help with that training um, at the Holomoa Strategic Plan Assembly session. Uh, we can have different people be facilitators and we can talk about uh, membership growth at that time. But you know the survey that we sent out, many, many of the clubs said they need help with growing. So let's, let's try and help them with um, growing their, their membership. Okay, and then in October, we're gonna be talking about how um, the clubs should be reviewing their um, their documents, their um, their bylaws and constitution about how you elect your officers. So in October, they should be forming their um, nomination nominating committee to get the slate up. Okay, that's re that's really funny. I got um, Mark on one side and Kathleen on one on the other side. I guess you guys are talking to each other. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> but um, anyway, if you if you can help the clubs with um, you know what they can do to help their own club with their um, boards, so October would be formed the nominating committee. November is put the word out that you're going to have election in December because December they should be having their election. At their election in December, before the end of December, they should be electing their board that takes office in July. Okay, so when you set, when you have that slate and you're electing the president-elect, that's the president-elect for July. So they take office in 18 months. Okay, so that really means that they need to have their um, president-elect for July 1st next year ready now. And, you know, as Doug reminded us, since we have the grant management um, session on October 17th, they really, really need to have their president-elect for starting July. They should have that person in place now. So please, please help your, your clubs that don't have, because uh, when I looked the other day, 21 of our, our clubs do not have a PE named. So um, any comments on that? So, uh, Naomi and Laura, yes. for this grant workshop where it's mandatory that it's a PE and one other club member to attend, in the event that a club absolutely does not have a PE, then is it the current president or the foundation chair that yes. attends? Okay. Actually, the, the statement is, is that two club members must attend. We highly recommend that one of them is the PE because it is the PE who is responsible for what's going to be happening in that year. Right. If it's the foundation chair as well because the person who signs these documents needs to know um, what they mean and what the rules are. But right. You know, if it, if it turns out to be two people in the club, uh, then they will have met the qualifications, but we will be talking to the PEs later to make sure that they understand once they are uh, chosen. <laughs> okay, okay. So let's, let's talk about that issue if they do not have a PE. So um, they need to have a PE because the training will start uh, for pets 
in like November. So how can we help the clubs get a PE on board? Oh, well, I just have one club that is struggling that does not have a PE right now. And I don't know how, if they're going to get one soon, um, but my other three have, I don't know if they all input it in online, but they just, one just recently um, <laughs> found one and then one is actually doing two terms and yeah, we, then our, our own club um, just recently Last had week. changed in a PE. Last week. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but you had a PE and, they, and she had to step down. So um, yeah, you, you, but we got a new one. Yeah, but we got yeah. one in place, a new one, right? But there's just we just have one club that I don't know how to help them because they're they're struggling. They have one church uh, president and the treasurer, and that's their board. Okay, guys, got any ideas? Thank well. You. Uh, Kathleen here. I, d I don't know if it's similar to the situation here, Windward and Hawaii Kai area, but I know, Naomi, you've been helping us with one of our clubs. Um, just, you know, is really uh, not doing well. And they don't, the, the president doesn't have an interest in being a president, basically, and talks about that quite a bit. And um, so that really influences other people's enthusiasm. If you kind of go around saying, I don't want to be president, I don't want to have meetings, and I don't really want to be doing this, um, that can really be, um, you know, spreading negativity. So I know that you have been talking to us about um, maybe having that be a satellite of an existing club. And so in talking to the other nearby clubs, people were very interested in that because then there's a lot of good things in that club. You know, there's some members that really do have some history and some strengths and um, don't want to just go away. You know, they would like to still be a club. Um, but in terms of, um, so there's kind of a win-win, I think. Now, I don't quite know how to go about that. I mean, there's some things we have to really do as far as getting that going, but um, I don't know if that would work in the other situation that we just talked about, but I, I'm very intrigued by this idea of rather than just say, well, then let's just dissolve. Um, and um, also, you know, I don't want to be badgering people about, you know, well, how come you haven't done this? And you got to do this. You got to do that. That's not working. So I think the idea of a satellite club is really worth um, looking at. And it's a, it's starting maybe with talking with the club members to see mm -hmm. where they stand and what they want to do. And so that's what we did for for Lanai as well. So we called a meeting with the members and, um, you know, they're, they're, they don't want to fall. They want to continue. And so they're uh, willing to come up with some ideas and bring in new members. And so there's a plan. And so when I talked to Scott, I said, well, Scott, you're at a um, fork in the road. So it depends mm -hmm. on what you got, what you want to do. So you can go and d go down one road and grow and get in new members who want to revive. Um, or you can go down that other road and do the satellite club. And so mm -hmm. I sent him the matrix so he could see what a satellite club was all about. And he's going to be talking to the club about that. Great. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. Thank you. Okay. So thank you. What about the um, others? Scott, did you have your hand up? Or were you just waving? <laughs> I was just waving to somebody that I accidentally cut off. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but but two cents on that would be, I don't know, maybe one way to get um, a potential PE is to make sure that they're coming to some of the webinar events and the Zoom okay. that we've been doing, yep. you know? Yep. So I think sometimes when you get involved with those, um, it becomes more real for some mm -hmm. people that don't know a whole lot about things. Yeah. So there was a, a person who was being asked to be P and she called me and, and said, you know, I, I can't do this. I don't, I'm not uh, prepared. I don't know anything. I'm new. And you know what? The ideas that she came up with on um, 
uh, what she could do for the club and what she saw for uh, as a vision. I say, hey, don't worry about it. We're going to have these training situations and you've got a good G AG and you've got support. And if you've got a good board, it's not that hard to be the president. You know, so if you've got some people like that for that need encouragement, just let them know that we're going to have a lot of training. Believe me, they're, they're the PEs have a lot of training, right? <laughs> there's, um, Benson uh, is going to be involved with that, and there's a lot of training for uh, the president elects, and we're going to really be asking the presidents and you guys to help them with, um, with uh, their training. Hey, Doug, do you have any ideas about how you can do that? Because the, the uh, Big Island clubs have a really good system of going three or five deep. And that's because Benson offers wine in his meetings. Um, so uh, I think that, um, yeah, I think that you, the way that it's been approached in some of the clubs is, the small clubs, they decided that if they wanted to be sticking around for two or three more years, they really needed to figure out who their presidents were gonna be for the next three or four years. And that allowed them to develop some longevity. So really the small clubs looked at everybody that's kind of in the club and said, look, we're all in this together. We're all gonna to have to do this. And they figured that out amongst themselves. For the larger Hilo clubs, um, they, uh, sometimes those clubs um, have had presidents they already have a lot of prior presidents. And um, and so it's like, okay, we need to make sure that we're bringing in uh, new folks. And that's what South Hilo did is they, they took a lot of the new folks and they became part of the board in, in committees. And then you stick them in a room and give them a lot of Snickers and they don't get to leave until they're president. <laughs> you know, they're going to pick a name. Um, and so uh, I think the other thing I would say is that um, uh, what uh, Kathleen was talking about was um, unfortunately a, a pretty extreme situation. Sometimes it's a matter of letting um, folks know that, you know, for example, the training is going to be, be beginning right in November for PE. So you, I'm going to be letting the club presidents know, look, we need, if you don't have the PEs, we need to let them, we need to let whoever's going to be PE be identified because actually training's starting. So sometimes having that deadline is a way to kind of, um, get folks off the um off the off the shy so thanks other comments no so you know talk with your presidents and and see um how you can help them especially with um uh, getting the slate for next year and uh getting a strong slate and letting them know that we have a lot of um, training for their board members so that they the board members will be strong for the, the club. Okay, so um, try and schedule a whole more uh, uh, session, either as you can call it an assembly, but trying to get the clubs to talk to each other and see what they need to do to move forward. Um, and then if you do need a facilitator, uh, um, ben, um, Beth, is, Beth and Wes are good facilitators if you need um, people. And uh, anybody else who comes up with a good facilitator, let us know, because sometimes it's better to have um, one that is outside of the club so that all of the members can participate in the discussion. Okay. Um, so training, Benson is working, still working on more training and, and come like November, December is going to be turning to more emphasis on the president elects. So we're really going to need your help to um, do that transition and help the president elects with their journey to leadership and what they need to learn so that July 1st, they will be ready to go with a, a board and a, a calendar and a budget that's already in place. Okay. Um, any questions on the Zoom meetings that we have? Uh, anything you want to bring up? Any issues with your clubs? Okay. I would I would like to just share out that I was able to do with Mariko. We did our um, island wide meetings with our presidents and president selects, uh, and our clubs are finally starting to gain some traction and starting to uh, uh, induct new members and those kinds of things. So we're 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 seeing them shift gears from oh my gosh, how do we even survive in this environment to hey, we can even grow. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I would just, uh, yeah, I would just say that the, uh, 
all the clubs except for South Hilo are looking forward to your visit uh, next week. Thank you. Mark, Kathleen, Dick, Jamie. I think this this whole idea of continuity for the clubs of the president elect being ready to be trained and feeling that they're supported by a team is the thing that probably concerns me the most going forward because that impacts club vitality and membership and everything else. But I think we'll get there. And I think the real answer is simply that uh, clubs need to understand that it's not about the individual being stuck out there by themselves. It's about a team accomplishing stuff. And if you have that uh, mindset, and if we don't have some old guy in the corner saying, we've always done it that way, I think we'll do well. We're gonna work it very hard. So, and I guess as by off the stage, my uh, neighbors up the street needed uh, a new mailbox put in and I went over and helped them pour the concrete and stuff and wore my Rotarian at work shirt. And they're coming by for a glass of wine and I think I'm gonna draft them into a Rotary Club. Mine is a Sunset Club. So little little steps work, I guess, even under COVID, so. Yep. Very good. Yep. Okay, other things that you wanna bring up? Any issues you wanna talk about? Get some help from your fellow AGs? Emilio, you have anything, Emilio? <laughs> okay, uh, Sandy, you need anything to talk to the AGs about? No? Okay. Um, and I think Randy's on there. Anything, Randy? No, I'm I'm on. Uh, I don't really have anything. Uh, it sounds like uh, you got everything well in control, Naomi. I would just add, uh, you know, uh, very very important for uh, uh, PEs and uh, president nominees. Uh, so, uh, selfishly speaking, so. <laughs> yeah, and and the question was asked. You know, who's supposed to be signing those qualification documents? And it is supposed to be the PE and the PN. <laughs> But it's very rare that clubs have both of those, which is uh, why we wrote the things to be two people. But, uh, you know, the ones who, who should be signing it and making the vow that they are going to follow those rules, uh, it is a memorandum of understanding uh, are the president elect and the president nominee to follow them. So the more we can get those two people, the better everything's going to be. And I do love the five deep in South Hilo. That's just amazing. Yay. Okay, so um, when you're working with your presidents, um, please, you're going to remind them to uh, get their grant statement in, um, talk about membership, do the whole OMOA, um, and then on October, get ready for the nominating committee. Oh, by the way, you know, um, HRYF, they're still missing some of those forms where they list out who the scholarship rep is and their, um, the club rep is. So please remind them that if they haven't sent it in, they've got to send it in now. Because when they make up that list of where the applications go to, they have to know where it's going. So please um, ask your president if they sent it in or not. And if they didn't, they need to send it in ASAP. Okay. Um, let them know about the training that is open to anyone who wants to go to training. Okay. Please. Nothing, nothing else, you guys? You guys, okay? I know it's kind of late, but. <laughs> okay. Okay, good. Thank you, everybody. Bye, Emilio. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Take good care, Take care. everybody. Thank you. Sorry I was late. <laughs> uh -huh. Thank you, thank Hello, you. Sister. Bye-bye. Thanks, Ben. <laughs> See everybody. Right. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank Hello, you. Hello,